Hey everybody, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. It's me, Andrew Fantasia. Well, it's my hand. There's my hand. Hi. Uh, and this is my first attempt ever at trying a Marvel United gameplay video. Um, my lighting in here is not the most ideal. My setup is not the most ideal, but we're going to make the best out of a not ideal situation and just see how this turns out. So I've gone ahead and been a little bit uh, breaking my rules a little bit um, in terms of how I like to play Marvel United. As you can see here, I've got everything set up. I normally, as you may or may not know, just play randomly. I always randomly pick all my heroes and villains because to me that's just the most fun way to play. But today we are breaking that rule as I proudly present to you for my first gameplay video ever the Oscar Isaac Smile Time Variety Hour, in which all three heroes and our villain have all been played by legendary screen actor Oscar Isaac. That's right, we've got Moon Knight, we've got two different versions of Spider-Man 2099, and our villain is Apocalypse. Oscar Isaac has played all of those characters, so we're just having a rip-roaring good old Oscar Isaac-y time. Now, I've never played with the new Spider-Man 2099, and I've never played with Apocalypse. Any Apocalypse, in fact, because I never got to the Season 2 Apocalypse. So a lot of this is going to be new to me. And maybe that was a bad idea to film this without any prior knowledge of these characters. Maybe I should have done a, a practice game first, but whatever. We're just going to jump in the deep end. So first, I guess first things first, is we will take a look at Apocalypse and how his rules work. So, he's got a starting master plan card, uh, which has already been set up. He also uh, is going to replace the Defeat Thugs mission with the Reset Timeline mission, uh, which you can see is already whoop, right there, ready to go. And then there are seven threat cards, so we have to shuffle them, and then I place them on the spots with the seventh one face down to the side as a surprise henchman. And there it is, right over there. So Apocalypse has eight health because we have three characters. And let's see his special rules together. So unlike standard rules, only the henchman in the location opposite to Apocalypse activates their ban. Ooh, that's good to know. If there is no henchman there, activate the first one in the next clockwise location, starting from there. Only the henchman that activates can be damaged until the next villain turn. Ooh, interesting. Okay, when a hero is KO'd, Apocalypse doesn't activate his BAM. Instead, remove the top card of that hero deck from the game. Uh, that's So his henchmen are going to be really hard to hit. That's cool. All right, what's his BAM do? Each hero in Apocalypse's in both adjacent locations removes the top card of their hero deck from the game. Well, see, that's just mean. I don't like you, Apocalypse. And his overflow says, if you can't add a thug or civilian to a location, deal one damage to each hero in that location. He sounds hard. And I mean, I guess Apocalypse should be hard um, because he's Apocalypse. He's kind of a big deal. So I get it. So in order to stop him, we're going to have to rescue civilians. We're going to have to clear threats. And we are going to have to uh, reset the timeline, which means we have to do two heroic actions on a single turn. And if we do that enough times, namely three, we can reset the timeline and go back in time and stop Apocalypse. So thankfully, time travel is on our side, I would imagine. I don't know, maybe we've got Spider-Man 2099's uh, bracelets from the Spider-Verse movie. Uh, so to take a look at what we have here, I guess in terms of just Apocalypse's henchmen. So actually, you know what? I was going to show you what every henchman does, but because they only activate sort of one at a time, like depending on where Apocalypse is, just to make things faster and smoother, Let's only talk about what they do when they have to do it, all right? Uh, okay, so Moon Knight. Just so you get a sense of who's in the game here. Here is Moon Knight. Here are all of Moon Knight's starting cards that he drew. He drew most of his uh, his power cards, which is kind of nice for me, but I don't know. He's going to have a lot, to, a lot of work ahead of him if he wants to defeat Apocalypse. And we're working with a hero I've been playing with for the first time, the original Spider-Man 2099. Um, and we're not using any of his uh, his equipment, anybody's equipment, really. We're just doing like the bare bones, basic, vanilla way of playing 
Marvel United. Okay. With that being said, let me just take a look at something here. All right. With that being said, I'm going to have a seat. And if all goes well, we might have a game on our hands here. So wish me luck, everybody. Um, I'm not as good at this as the Meeple Monkey is yet, but there is a first time for everything. So Apocalypse has a starting master plan card. Boom, here it is. Uh, we're going to take a look at this together. All right, so I'm just going to hold that up for one quick second so you can take a gander. And now, I hope that was in frame. So, zero, he's not moving, and he's banning. So for his ban, each hero in his and both adjacent locations removes the top card of their hero deck from the game. Well, we're not close to him yet, so we're safe. But now, Shadow King is going to ban because he's in the location opposite of Apocalypse. Oh no, so... Shadow King's thing says, heroes in this and adjacent locations must turn their earliest card in the storyline face down. Oh, sorry, the earliest card with a special effect in the storyline face down. So he's limiting our special effects. If they can't, they take one damage instead. So everybody is taking a damage in my location. Wow. Already, huh? Eh? Apocalypse here wasting no time. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I guess I will get rid of this Moon Knight suit because I have a healing card in there. Um, Spider-Man, let's get rid of this one heroic action. And for the white Spider-Man, let's... Uh, Hmm, this is going to be tricky. Let's get rid of this move and this punch. Let's just have that out of the way. All right. And now, Supreme Strategist. Each hero must discard their hand and draw the same number of cards. Okay, well, all that time I just spent deciding what cards to keep has become a moot point. So, Apocalypse is already whipping my butt. Uh, and there goes Spider-Man 2099's starting hand card, which was probably handy. But I didn't even get a chance to really take a look and see what it does, because Apocalypse has laid the smackdown on me already. And uh, that is, you know, it might not be for everybody, but that is the way I play. I don't read ahead and look at what everybody does and try to strategize and have the most synergy. I literally just surprise myself. I have no idea what his deck looks like, because I've never used them. I haven't used these guys in ages, so I don't even remember what their decks are like. So it's a surprise every time I play, which I like. It keeps everything fresh. So I literally don't know what that card was that I just lost, but if it pops up again, it pops up again. And then last but not least, he's going to drop some people. So he's going to drop a thug where he's standing right there. And then a civilian on either side of him. Well, that was... One hell of a opening turn. I guess uh, there's nothing, no way to go but forward. But we know now, based on these rules, Shadow King is the only henchman who's vulnerable to damage because he's the one who just activated. Um, so we should start laying the smackdown on Shadow King. All right, it's Moon Knight's turn. What do you got for us, Moon Knight? Um, okay, I'll tell you what. Moon Knight is just going to play a simple punch. That's it. Just one simple little punch just to get rid of some of Shadow King's health. This is definitely the kind of game where, uh, you know, depending on the villain, you want to sort of prioritize these the right way, right? Some villains, you really want to get rid of civilians quickly. In this case, it looks like getting rid of the threats is going to be our biggest uh, obstacle. So I'm going for the henchman as much as I can. All right. It is now Spider-Man 2099's turn. Um... And I think, uh, bah, 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 bah. I think our best bet here is let's do this. Let's just give ourselves some options. He's going to have a move and a heroic. So I'm going to use the one punch Moon Knight gave me to punch Shadow King. And then I'm going to move over here and rescue a civilian in Avalon. All right, <laughs> this is a great mini. I haven't really had a chance to pick this up and feel it, but... Man, it's got a good weight to it. Really, really beautiful miniature. All right, now the white Spider-Man 2099 is going. Uh, whoops. 
And I think um, it is in everybody's best interests here. I'm going to just play this lonely little wild, just like that. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to use that one wild to punch Shadow King. All right. So one henchman down. That's it. And remember, there's another one waiting in the wings, so we want to be expedient with these henchmen. And now I have a move and a heroic. So I think what I want to do is um, stay where I am. I'm not going to use the movement. I'm going to use the heroic to rescue this civilian. And because I stayed and ended my turn there, I'm going to draw one card because I only have one or two cards in hand anyway. See? So let's just heal up after that attack. There we go. That's Spider-Man White's turn. Now it's back to this ugly gentleman over here with his fascist plans for world domination. Okay, let's see what Apocalypse is doing. Ba-boom! He's doing one of these. All right. He's going to move three. Oh, he's not bamming. Interesting. So he's going to move all the way over here to Kumlun, where we're hiding and hanging out here. And he's got Ace in the hole. Place the surprise henchman in the location opposite to Apocalypse's. If there is already a threat there, replace it with the surprise henchman. The replaced threat becomes the new surprise henchman. Then bam. Okay. Um, I see. All right, okay. So Sugar Man, who was opposite, is going away. And Mr. Sinister. Oh, it's Mr. Sinister. He's always bad news. He's taking his place. So Mr. Sinister is going there. Sugar Man is now going to wait in the wings. And now a BAM happens. So Apocalypse's BAM is each hero in his and both adjacent locations removes the top card of their hero deck from the game. That's terrible. All right. And that feels like that's going to happen a lot. So I'm just going to make a pile here. Everybody's losing one card. And now what does Mr. Sinister do? One hero in this location removes the top card of their deck from the game. Until the next villain turn, special effects on hero cards in the storyline are treated as blank. So he's just effectively eliminated our special powers until the next villain turn. Well, that sucks. Okay. Uh, now it's time to just place, uh, populate some civilians and thugs. So let me get these out here. Boom and boom. So he's putting two civilians down there in Kunlun, which thankfully we've just cleared up. And then he's putting a thug here and a thug, whoops, flying thug right there. And, uh, you know, the overflows are not amazing either. So we want to get on that. These locations are really filling up. All right. Moon Knight, what are you going to do, my friend? The only person we can harm now is Mr. Sinister, but he's so far away that we're not even going to try at this point. We have a wild. Um, so you know what? Let's play a star. Play a heroic action. And Moon Knight's going to use that star and that wild to rescue these two civilians that just got dropped. So we can start working our way on those civilians. Um, and then, because he ended his turn there, he's going to draw a card and heal. Okay. Now here, this is what Spider-Man 2099's got. He is going to play this card, a heroic and a punch. So I don't want to waste all my punches on thugs, but for now, because we don't really have much of a choice, that thug is going to get punched just so he's out of the way. Um, those two stars, though, is going to be Spider-Man 2099 trying to reset the timeline. So there we go. Resetting the timeline. Beautiful. And lastly, White Spider-Man 2099, what is he going to do? Okay. I think, I think, hmm. I want to use these smaller cards. I don't know, but I, I was going to say, I want to use these smaller cards first, but because they, Apocalypse makes us lose cards, it's probably in our best interest to be kind of quick about things. So let's use this move and heroic. So he's going to move over here. He's going to punch that thug. Just get him out of the way. And then 
uh, he's going to use those two heroics to reset the timeline as well. Okay, so <laughs> what I just said about wanting to prioritize the threats, it's actually probably in our best interest to prioritize these two because we can get them done faster. Uh, so maybe the threats are just there as a distraction. He's trying to divert our attention. All right, Apocalypse, it's your turn, sir. What are you going to do? One ban. Okay, one ban. That's not good. So, White Spider-Man and Moon Knight are both losing cards and then dark beast is going to do something he's going to remove one health from each adjacent henchman and apocalypse gains the same amount of health so apocalypse has just gained two health that's terrible news and then lastly he's just going to populate uh, with civilians and thugs so Again, it's a good thing I cleared up some space here, or we would be having a different conversation right now. So two civilians there. And then, as the rules state, we got to go clockwise. So now a thug in the core, which is very full, and a thug in Kunlun. All right. Well, Dark Beast is vulnerable, which is good, because he's kind of a pain. So... All right, Moon Knight's got his double wild, so you know what? We're going to use his double wild because I'm terrified that we're just going to end up losing these the way things are going. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to play that double wild. We're going to move. So we have a move, a heroic, and two wilds. We're going to move here, spend a heroic to rescue, spend one more wild to move, and the last wild to rescue as well. Okay. There, cleaned up a little bit. We're well on our way to rescue civilians. All right, Spider-Man 2099, I would like him to go after Dark Beast. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do these two punches here. So he's got two wilds and two punches. So he's going to use one wild to move to the Brooklyn Bridge. And then that gives him three punches. So three punches is exactly enough to take out Dark Beast. Boom! Awesome. So now we don't have to worry about Dark Beast doing that anymore. And there we go. And the end of turn effect is open, but I'm not going to add more people to that location because it's already getting pretty full. Okay. Ooh, Spider-Man 29 also has his wild 2099, I should say. Um, however, do I, wanna, I don't think I want to use that double wild right now. So, tell you what. Let's be, let's err on the side of caution, and I may be very accurate when I say err, but we'll see what happens in the future. We'll just move here, and we'll punch two thugs so that we don't have to worry about overflow for a while. Okay, maybe that worked, who knows. Apocalypse, your turn, sir. Four, ban, and he's putting people down. Sorry, I hope, uh, I hope I'm holding these close enough when I do hold them up. All right, four, ban. One, two, three, Four. Oh no! Apocalypse is uh, going to do something to us here with Havoc, probably. So first of all, regular Spider-Man 2099 loses a card. Now what does Havoc do? Meepo Monkey, what is your friend doing to us? Deal two unpreventable damage to one hero in each adjacent location. Oh! So we're safe, because nobody's adjacent. That's, okay, beautiful. Wow, that, we could not have planned that better if we tried. All right, good. All things considered, that was a very uh, docile ban. Okay, and now he is adding a thug where he's standing in Avalon, and then a civilian in Kunlun, and another civilian at the Brooklyn Bridge, so it's a good thing we didn't fill it up before. Okay. But granted, I guess we could have filled it up before because it, you know, we could have right away rescued it, so whatever. Um, all right. Moon Knight. So now we know we can lay some smackdown on Havoc, but he has a lot of health, right? He's got four. Okay. All right, so let's do this. Let's do, whoops, let's do a heroic and a punch. And we have a move there. So for the heroic, actually for the punch, let's punch Havoc. And then we will move 
and for the heroic, we will rescue this civilian here. Okay. Hmm. Spider-Man 2099. Um, let's use his wild. Let's just use a single wild. So that's punch in a wild. We'll do two punches, two havoc. And for that heroic, I guess we'll rescue this guy. Okay, but now, oh wait, hold on, I did that totally wrong. See, I did that totally wrong, because that is not Spider-Man. That is not the blue Spider-Man. This is the blue Spider-Man. So, do I still want to play that wild, or do I want to do something different? Uh, <laughs> we have a star and a punch, but, yeah, you know what, maybe we'll do this. Maybe we'll do this. Let's, let's do this. Let's play his entangling webs. So, attach a stun token to one villain or henchman in your location. Next villain turn, their bam is canceled, and that token is discarded. Okay, so I'm going to do this. I will use that star to rescue somebody. Then I will move Spider-Man over here, punch a thug, and lastly... I don't have any stun tokens on hand uh, with what I'm playing with, so I'm just going to put that there. Oops, not on him. On him. Mr. Sinister is stunned. There we go. So hopefully Apocalypse moves one and we don't have to worry about anything. All right, now it is White Spider-Man's turn. Um, oh, that works out perfectly. Okay, so he's going to play his double punch that he just drew. And he's going to punch Havoc twice. And there goes Havoc. Okay. So we don't have to worry about Havoc anymore. Uh, let's see what this end of turn effect is, because I've never used this location. You may add one civilian from the pool to the rescue civilian's mission, which would solve it for us. If you do, and there are any civilians, thugs, villains, or other heroes in this location, you must discard one card from here. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, it's okay. We will have plenty of opportunity to save that last civilian. All right, Apocalypse. Two, bam. One, two. Oh, boy. So, Moon Knight is losing another card. And the White Spider-Man is losing another card. Uh, and now, that's interesting, because now there's no henchman who can ban. So that's good. But that's also bad, because none of them are vulnerable. Um... If there is no okay, so if there is no henchman there, and that's what this says here, activate the first one in the next clockwise location. So abyss, abyss is going to be hurting everybody. So okay, Moon Knight's going to lose that single move. Um, Spider Man will lose this, and White Spider Man. We'll lose this. All right. Population time. Apocalypse finishes his turn by putting two civilians down right there. Whoops, that guy's upside down. That's not good. And then a thug right here. And a thug right here. Okay. Um, this goes away. This didn't really help us, but, you know, better safe than sorry. Okay, Moon Knight, what are you going to do, sir? Hmm. Well, I don't want to use Khonshu's power, because it only gives you special wild for special effect cards in the storyline, including this one, and he only, he has got zero in the storyline right now. So let's go for... Let's do this. Let's play the single wild. We have two punches there, so let's just bring Moon Knight over here and punch these two guys, these two thugs, to free up some space, because Kunlun was full. And since he ends his turn there, he can draw a card because he only has two cards. So, heal back up. All right. Blue Spider-Man's turn. Huh. Hmm. 
Well, our options are kind of limited, but I'm gonna just do this for now. There's a move, a wild, and a punch. I'm just gonna move, wild, punch. Um, that might have been all for nothing because Abyss only has, he still has two health and there's no way White Spider-Man is getting to him, but it really is sort of the only option that we've got right now. Okay. Okay, Spider-Man 2099 White just drew his claws, but I think what we're going to do instead of that is we're going to draw this. So he's going to play his double wild here. He will move and punch. Oh no, wait a minute, wait a minute. This was bad. He started his turn in Niflheim, uh, which means he has to ignore an action symbol at the bottom one of the cards, so he can't punch Abyss anyway. All right, so let's uh, let's redo that. Um, so instead of moving all the way over there and punching Abyss, he is going to... Hmm. Let's go punch, and then move, and then wild. Whoops. Yeah. All right. And now Spider-Man 2099 will play that double wild. And he will, yeah, so punching Abyss really wasn't working out anyway, so that's fine. Uh, and he is going to, what was I going to have him do? Right, I was going to have him stay where he is. Yeah, stay where he is and punch a thug. Okay. And then use two wilds to do two more things to reset the timeline. So because that is done, the timeline is reset. We have completed one mission. So now Apocalypse is under pressure, but it's his turn anyway. All right. What do we got? Five and bam. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Right. He loves just going after Moon Knight. Okay, Moon Knight loses another card. How many cards has he lost so far? One. Whoops. One, two, three, four cards already. That's terrible. Okay. Mr. Sinister is activating. One hero in this location removes the top card of their deck from the game. Good. But until the next villain turn, special effects on hero cards in the storyline are treated as blank. Bad. All right. Well, now he's putting a thug there. Uh-oh. He wants to put a civilian there, but he can't. So overflow means... Deal one damage to each hero in that location. Oof, thankfully, nobody's there. And then he puts a civilian here. Okay, so that turn could have gone way worse. Uh, but now, Moon Knight has no more cards to draw. Uh, Mr. Sinister is vulnerable, but he cannot be hurt by Moon Knights this turn anyway. But Moon Knight has two wilds, so... Um, tell you what. Here's what we're going to do. Here is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to play Disassociative Identity Disorder, which we can't use the special effect anyway, even if Mr. Sinister hadn't done what he did. But it's going to give us two punches to go with the two wilds. So we're going to use one wild to rescue this civilian in Kunlun. All right. Now, that has completed the civilian mission. Boom! Now Apocalypse is vulnerable. And we have one more wild and two punches. So you know what that means? Moon Knight is going to punch Apocalypse three beautiful times in the throat. He's going to punch him right in the throat. And that was a nice little chunk of damage. Um, so you know what? Um, no, we're not going to risk using that just yet. Okay. That was a good turn. All right. Blue Spider-Man, it is your turn now. What do you got? You got two punches there to work with. Uh, you can't reach Apocalypse. So huh. I think the best bet here is to you play this wild. Just play this wild. Just see what happens. And take the wild here, I guess. And... Let's punch Mr. Sinister twice. Again, it's not ideal, but it's something. 
It's something. All right. Apocalypse goes again now because he's under pressure. Two, bam. One, two. So white Spider-Man is losing a card. And blue Spider-Man is losing his starting hand card. Oh, no. So we'll never know what that means. At least not yet. Abyss is activating. So he's dealing one damage to everybody in the game. Um, so let's... Moon Knight only has two cards, so it doesn't matter what he discards. Uh, that, unfortunately, is knocking out Blue Spider-Man. And White Spider-Man is going to lose that. So we have a KO on our hands. So Blue Spider-Man loses the next card from his deck. And finally, Apocalypse is going to add a Thug and a Civilian. And he would add one there, but he can't. But nobody is there, so... There's nobody to harm. All right. White Spider-Man, it's your turn. Um, okay. Well, he's definitely going to play this. Whoops, sorry. The people upstairs are just dropping stuff as usual. He's definitely going to play this. He gets a punch, plus he gets to use his claws. Uh, and he, he also gets to have this wild here. So that's four. One, two, three, four punches against Mr. Apocalypse. So one, two, three, four. Oh, those punches were not in the throat. He punched him in the back because Apocalypse has his back turned. He's busy pontificating. So White Spider-Man is just like, uh, uh, uh. there we go. Uh, and that leaves Apocalypse with three health left. So we're not doing as horribly as I thought we were. However, I don't want to jinx it, and I probably just did. Alrighty. Hmm. Okay. This might work to our advantage. Okay. Moon Knight is going to play Conchu's Power, one wild for each of your special effects cards in the storyline, including this one. He only has one. But that means he has two wilds, plus a punch, plus a heroic. So, yeah, let's try. Abyss is really... Hmm. But we can't hurt Abyss this turn, right? Because he has... Two wilds and a punch. So one wild, another wild. and a, Yeah, that's not enough to take out Abyss. So I might regret this, but let's do this. Let's use one wild to move here. One wild to rescue this guy. Let's keep doing what we were doing. The last wild to move here and the punch to punch Apocalypse. Okay. Sorry, I was debating who to go after because I know Abyss is going to keep being a problem if we leave him where he is but it is what it is all right Apocalypse four bam one two three four Mr. Sinister is activating again thankfully he's still knocked out so that doesn't affect him but now we lose our hero powers once again uh he doesn't discard a card from anybody beautiful and now he's dropping civilians there and a thug here. And a thug here. And that's it. Uh, Alright. There's only two cards left for Blue Spider-Man, so he's just going to stand up. Now here's the thing. We can kill Mr. Sinister right now. But if we do, that increases the likelihood of Abyss activating. And Abyss is hurting everybody. We don't want that. So... Maybe it's best that we don't touch Sinister. So how about this? We don't have many options here. He's only got two cards in his hand. He's going to use a move and a punch. Plus he's got that heroic there. So, oh, but he's going to have to ignore something because he started here. So let's ignore the heroic. And let's just move and punch this even if we do take out Sinister and we get that last threat, everybody would draw a card, but there's nobody has cards left to draw. Apocalypse is draining us. So, yeah, it's fine. We're going to leave those henchmen where they are. All right. White Spider-Man now. Oh! Guys, I think we might have a victory on our hands. Okay. White Spider-Man is going to play this move and punch. So that gives him two moves and two punches. One, two moves, one, two punches. 
We did it. We beat Apocalypse, one of the hardest, most powerful X-Men villains. We beat him. Wow. I really hope I did that correctly and I didn't mess up anything. Um, they really, you know, all the special rules really just involve the henchmen. And I don't think I screwed up any of that, except, you know, those one couple little times when I did. And I quickly realized and backtracked. So I think I'm okay. I think we stopped Apocalypse. And that has been the Oscar Isaac Smile Time Variety Hour. We did it. Okay, White Spider-Man, you get the honors, buddy. You took down this big boy here. So show us what's going to happen. So they're in Kunlun. So let's come up with a creative reason for what's going on here. So he went to Kunlun. He decided if he's going to stop the biggest, baddest dude around, he's going to go get the power of the Iron Fist. So White Spider-Man swung in and he punched the dragon and he got the Iron Fist and his fist was glowing. And Apocalypse was busy, right? Because he's doing what he always does. He's like, oh, I'm the best. And just talking to nobody in particular. And then he turns around and he's like, oh, what's going on here? And he sees a guy with a glowing fist. And the guy just swings in and goes, Brrr! and he punches Apocalypse in the heart. And Apocalypse is like, ah, my heart. I'm not supposed to get glowing fists in it. And he falls over and he's down for the count. And because they reset the timeline, they also rewound and uh, everything went back to normal. Abyss. And the other henchmen were still okay, but uh, that's, uh, you know, they don't matter anymore. Nemesis didn't do anything, really. I don't think he activated at all, which is good for us, because his is kind of a mean power. But there you go. That's the Oscar Isaac Smile Time Variety Hour. And Oscar, if you're watching, and I know you are, you're welcome. So anyway, guys, that'll do it for my first gameplay video. I hope I did all right. I hope, you know, I could show you cards in a manner that was, you know, enjoyable for you to see and that I wasn't just ignoring you and showing you the wrong stuff or not showing you enough stuff. Uh, let me know in the comments. Please be gentle with me. It's my first time trying one of these. So, I don't know. We'll see. If this worked out, then look forward to more in the future. Until next time, guys. Adios as we continue to make the wait for DC United Multiverse a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter by enjoying the heck out of Marvel. Ciao for now.